Hey guys, this is Tommy from StorageFig.net. In this video, I want to show you how you can create an instance group. To do so, let's navigate to the Compute section, Compute Engine and Instance Groups. Currently, I have none, so let's create the first one. Let's give it a name, for example, Web Group 1. I will leave the default region in zone and choose the instant template. Since I have none, let me create the new one. We need to give it a name, so let's call it web template. I will leave default machine type, default disk image, but only add HTTP traffic to firewall rules. And also in the management security disk section, I will create a startup script. Within the startup script, I will install Apache 2, PHP, and create two files, one with the default index.html message and one with test.php with the short script to CPU stress test our machines later. As you can see the script is just a simple loop with doing some calculations and then printing the output on the screen. Alright, I think that's about it. I think that's all the settings we have to choose for our web template. Let me save and continue. The newly created instance template is already chosen, so let's go for the auto scaling. I will leave the CPU at 60% rule as default, change the minimum number of instances to 2 and the maximum number of instances to 4. And let's create a health check. I will call that HTTP check, which will verify if the instance is responding on TCP port 80, so for HTTP. Let's leave all the default values, save and continue. And the health check is also created. The initial delay of 300 seconds is OK, which means that the health check will not be done before 5 minutes after the uh, instance is created, because the startup script might take some time to, uh, to finish. Alright, since the instance group is being created, let's browse through our changes. First, let's see if we can see our new instance template. We could have created that separately, but it depends what, what you fancy and what you find more comfortable. Uh, instance template is already there. Let's check if the health check is created. We can reuse the same instance template and the same health checks within the future instance groups if we desire. It's there. So let's go for the VM instances. And stress test is one of my older machine and the new web group one, two instances are already created. They are most likely still running the startup script. You can verify that by going to the details of the machine. I just opened that on the new tab and check the stack driver logs. Let's do it right now. Just remember the startup script might take some time to finish, depends on what we put in the script. Uh, when you're looking through logs, you can search for startup-script to see the entries. As you can see, the new packages will be installed, Apache 2 and some dependencies. This is still ongoing. Uh, load new logs. I don't see nothing. The installation is probably still going on in the background. In the meantime, let me navigate back to the instance group and see the status and see how it looks like. The instance group is still not ready, but that's okay. We set the default 300 seconds delay before the health check will mark the instance as unhealthy. In the meantime, let's see if there are some new logs available for us to see the progress of the installation. When I refresh the logs, I should see some new entries. And yes, we see 18 newly installed packages. So it seems that the Apache 2 should be already installed. Let's check it. Now let's navigate back to the instance group and try to access external IP address. If we see our welcome page, it means it's installed. And we see hi from and the host name. Let's check the second instance if it's responding. Also, hi from the host name. Uh, so this is great. The only thing to check is also the test.php, the script we have created also within our, uh, our startup script. So let me navigate to test.php. It should do some calculation and present the result together with the hostname. And we see it on the screen. 
this number is meaningless, it's just to stress the CPU later on. As you can see, the status of our two instances are healthy. So we've got our two instances in the instance group with the auto scale, so possibly more instances in the future. Let's create the one front end interface. For that, we're going to navigate to the network services and load balancing. And I'm going to create the load balancer. I will choose the HTTP load balancing uh, from the internet to my VMs. That's okay. And the first step is to give it a name as everything in the GCP. Let's call it web server LB. Let's create the backend configuration. In my case, that will be the backend service. And for the backend service, I will give it a name web server backend and choose the backend type as an instance group. We have some other options, but in this case, the instance group is what I want. I already have the instance group created, which we done. So let's choose it as the web group one. Uh, let's leave the default balancing mode and the default options. Select done. For this example, I will not use the CDN, but I will choose the health check. And Let's reuse the one we already created, HTTP check. Uh, let's click create. The backend configuration is ready. Let's go with the simple host and path rule, no changes here, and let's configure the front end. So again, we have to give it a name. Let's call it web server HTTP front end. We are going to use HTTP protocol with the default port 80 with the FNL IP address. So the new IP address will be created. Let's click done. Review and finalize. Everything seems to be okay. The fetching health status is already going in the background. Let's click create. The HTTP load balancer is creating and it usually takes well some time, around 3 to 5, even to 10 minutes before it's fully healthy and operational. So even when you see the IP address and you're trying to access it and you don't see your result, don't worry, just give it a little bit more time. When it still doesn't work after 10 minutes, it might be something wrong with the configuration, but usually it just needs more time. Anyways, in the background, we can go for the external IP addresses and notice that the IP address for our frontend is already created. Alright, so let's navigate back to the load balancing section and see if we can actually notice the same IP address for our frontend. Uh, it's in the network services, load balancing. The health status might be still in progress because it's checking that periodically. And it is. Let's go inside. The IP address is already there for the front end. However, since we configured that like a minute ago, it will still not be operational. Let's give it some time. Okay, around five minutes later, let me check if the IP address is responding. So let's try to access it via a web page. And we see the reply from one of the instance. When we refresh, there's another one. And again, the first one and the second one. So the load is balancing between the two instances in our instance group. So this is working according to our plan. We've got our instance group with two instances at the moment. And they are applying based on the uh, load balancing settings within the one frontend IP address for the end user. Now to show you the power of instance group and load balancer, I will connect via SSH to one of my computers, one of my instances, and simulate the failure of one of them. I will stop the Apache 2 which will make it unresponsive on port 80 and see how load balancing and how instance group will handle that. Alright, once connected, let me stop the Apache 2 service. Let's verify that it is actually stopped. Notice that this is xd9w host and the Apache 2 is stopped. Let me close the session and see what's going on on the load balancing IP address. The first time we're trying to refresh, it took some time, but it refreshed with the working host. And now when I'm refreshing multiple times, I only get to the uh, healthy host. 
Let's check that in the console. First, let's go for the load balancer monitoring. Uh, we don't see any data here because we just started using it and there's some interval. However, in the instance group details, we already see that one of the instances is unhealthy. When we refresh the page, I should see, or at least I expect to see, that the unhealthy host is being recreated. And it is. It might take some time, however, due to the using or usage of the instance group, our end users will still get the reply from the healthy host all the time. And after a few minutes, I see the reply from the unhealthy host as well, because it was recreated. When we navigate back to the instance group, we can even see the creation time is updated because it was created from the beginning. Let me now try to stress test our CPU to see if the instance group will autoscale under pressure. So for that I will start the cloud shell and try to load test.php multiple times just to put some pressure on the CPU of both instances and see what happens. I will grab the URL of the test.php script and using bash I will write a loop to constantly get the reply from this web page. Uh, let me just put echo as well just to have a new line after each response. Okay, as you can see it's already working. Let me open another cloud shell and do the same just to generate a more, more load and more traffic into those two instance, uh, instances in my instance group. Alright, so another one is working. Let's open a new one. That will be the third Cloud Shell tab, and I think that should be enough. Let's do the same. So, while loop to constantly get the result of test.php. Again, with empty echo to give it a new line. And this is also working. As you can see, uh, this is going in the background. So we should see more CPU usage on the both holes and ideally our instance group should increase. As you remember at the beginning we set the minimum value of 2 and the maximum value of 4 instances and it, it auto goes based on the CPU utilization. And as you can see in the background already the third instance is being created. Since I put so much stress on the CPU of those two machines, because three cloud shells are constantly getting results of this test.php script, there's a good chance it will auto go to the maximum size of four instances. Let's navigate to the VM instances and see what's the status over there. And as you can see, we do have four instances created. Now, Bear in mind that those two, the fresh ones, are still probably running the uh, startup script in the background, so they might seem unhealthy or even without uh, any status for a couple of minutes, but that's normal. You can all, always go to the instance details and check the stack driver logs if you want to. But that should happen automatically and you shouldn't worry about that too much. Yeah. If after the recreation the status would be unhealthy, well, then there is something to be investigated. But for this moment, when this is still being created, that's perfectly fine. Let me just stop with Ctrl C all three um, while loops to stop generating the traffic because we got the results we wanted. So I have no uh, reason to put more stress on the CPU of my machines. And let's see if the new instances are responding and not yet so let's give it a little bit more time after around a minute or two as you can see all the instances are healthy let me refresh the page just to make sure that this value will also change to 100 percent of the healthy status since we stop the cpu load uh, the instance group will decrease to the minimum value of two instances around a couple of minutes later. But for now, let me check the load balancer. And as you can see, all the hosts are replying under the same IP address and no changes on the load balancer were necessary. 
Alright, so I think that's enough for this video. In this one I've created an instance group using the instance template and new health check. I configured the auto scaling and HTTP load balancer as a front end. We've tested the auto healing and auto scaling and that works perfectly fine. In my next video, based on our work, I will configure HTTPS load balancer with Google managed SSL certificate and custom domain, just to show you how easy it is. So if you are interested, look for the video in my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.